damage that our smartphone addictions do to us. Think about what happens every time when you leave your work or leave whatever you're doing and switch to WhatsApp or Instagram or even email or news or anything, especially in this part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, that part of the brain has to manage the switching. One study found that when people get distracted, it takes them on an average, you know how much? Even this is not the total damage, something worse. When we think about the damage that our smartphone addictions do to us, we, we think that the problem with smartphones is that they waste our time. But that view is mostly wrong. Here's why. Saying that smartphones are wasting your time, it's like saying that taking illegal drugs, it's bad for you because it costs a lot of money. Yes, it does cost money. But the real reason you should not take these opioid drugs or heroin or brown sugar or, or for that matter even any, any drug is not because they cost money. That's of course, it's a small thing. But the real reason is that they ruin your mental health, they take away your self-control, they destroy your thinking process, they ruin your life. That is the biggest damage. The money that it costs, that a drug is going to cost, is the smallest part of the damage. Very similarly, the time that you waste on your smartphone devices when you are hooked to them, the time wastage is actually the smallest part. Here's what happens. Let's assume that you have an eight hour working day and you spend maybe like one or two hours on WhatsApp, Instagram, all those things. So let's say two hours as an example, a little bit on the higher side, all right? Now two hours in eight hours, that's like 25%. It's bad enough, but think about what happens every time when you leave your work or leave whatever you're doing and switch to WhatsApp or Instagram or even email or news or anything. What happens there? It's a couple of things. One is your brain now has to switch. Okay, so when we are thinking or working on something, a certain circuit in your brain is activated to handle that thought process, to work, to, to handle that work. When you switch from task A to task B, your brain has to switch off this circuit and switch on this another circuit. And the switch on switch off process, it requires somebody to direct that. So like traffic police, you have traffic policemen who direct traffic. Similarly, in our brain, the certain part of our brain, especially in this part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, that part of the brain has to manage the switching. So now you require, brain has to work extra hard to manage the switching. So now you're overworking and you will get exhausted and it causes strain. One more thing. When you switch off one circuit and switch off another circuit, it's not as neat. So what happens is the switch off, the circuit that has to switch off, it does not switch off completely. And the one that is switched on, that also it's not complete. So essentially your brain has, the previous thing is not fully gone, it's also there, the new thing also is there. So now your mind is simultaneously working on the current thing, but also kind of it's aware of what just happened. So now you suddenly start feeling overwhelmed. One more thing, very often when we switch to our email or WhatsApp or whatever, we might say, oh, I'll just, just you know, check and come like in five seconds, just a quick check. But research has shown that very often when you check something, let's say you go and search something online on YouTube, you'll find what you're looking for, but then also, you'll also find many other things and you may go and search for something else. And then that'll take you to something else. And before you realize what was supposed to be a 30 second check or maybe a quick Google search, it has become a 10, 20, 30 minute affair. In fact, one study found that when people get distracted, it takes them on an average, you know how much? 23 minutes and 15 seconds to come back. Okay, 23 minutes, not one minute, not two minutes. Now, of course, this was one study, so maybe every time it's not 20, sometimes maybe like five, sometimes it is 10 minutes, sometimes maybe it's like half an hour, but it's not 30 seconds, very rarely it is. So when you get distracted, it may take much longer for you to come back to what you were doing. So when you add it all up, it's not 25% of your day gone. If you're, if you're spending two hours on, on Instagram, WhatsApp, etc., it's a lot more but even that is not the complete damage. Here is more coming. When we are trying to do work, the quality of work and the outcome depends upon how much you're able to focus. Now focus is like going deep, okay? So it takes time, your brain will slowly go deep. So now let's say you start working on something and you start going deep, 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 and then suddenly you, your mind gets distracted, you jump up to something else, and then when, when you come back, you have to again restart. And every, if every five minutes you're jumping away, you never get a chance to go deep into something. Scientists and researchers who, who have to work on deep problems, they say that it takes them sometimes like an hour maybe, sometimes more than that to actually really go deep into something. So if you are just jumping around, you are always, your mind is always shallow, you will never be able to do a really good job, especially if you're facing a tough problem. So now, lost time, but also the quality of work is, is bad, is, or you're not able to do something remarkable, 
and it takes so much more effort it feels very very stressful you feel anxious you feel agitated but even that is not the full extent of the damage when we are constantly jumping from task a to task b from email to whatsapp from here to there what's happening is we are training our mind to jump away so whenever we find something which is boring a little tedious a little challenging our mind will say you know what let's escape let's go and check that message or let's go and do something so you're training your mind to run away from anything which is boring, which is tedious, which is hard. And it turns out that all the things that are valuable, anything valuable that you do in your life will not necessarily be exciting. You have to be able to stay with difficult tasks. Only then you will be able to build a good career. But here you're trained, training your mind to do exactly the opposite. That is why when you're doing hard things, your mind will keep running away. It wants to, you want to check email, you want to do something else. Even this is not the total damage, something worse which is that when you are used to just your mind is used to it running around, you are never present. Let's say you go to, a, go to a good restaurant and you're having a nice meal. The dish might be delicious, but you will know it is delicious only if your attention is there on eating. If your mind is somewhere else, you're just eating absentmindedly. You're talking to your, let's say, talking to your friend, to your colleagues, maybe to your, to your family members. You're talking to your, your parents or to your spouse or somebody. And while you're, you're talking, your mind is not there. You're half there, half somewhere else, which means you did not experience that conversation. You did not experience that meal, which means overall, you're not experiencing life. We are going through life absent-mindedly like a zombie. Are we really living? If you're not living, then what's the whole point? Forget productivity. Forget everything else. We can't even live life. What can be worse? So whether you want to build a good career or you want to make money or you want to be happy or you want to be just present with your friends or you just want to, to live life properly and fully, you have to stay present and you have to get over your digital addictions. There is no way out. Do it.